can take the pain, the heartache that life brings, the comforts and knowing that I'll soon be gone. As God gives me praise, I'll run this Christian race until I see my Savior. to be here this evening, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Won't you just turn and greet your neighbor? Welcome each and every one of them in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. Let's sing a song. He's an on-time God. He's on time, isn't he? He knows every situation, every need we ever had, and he's on time for it. Well, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Sing it again. Well, he's a long time, God. Is he? The children of Israel trapped at the Red Sea. Oh, by that we know Pharaoh and his army. They had water all around them and old Pharaoh on their track. Oh, but out of nowhere, my God stepped in and built a highway. Just like that, let me tell you, he's an on time God, is he? Oh, he's an on time God, is he? Joel said he may not come when you want him to, but he will be there right on time. Well, oh, he's an on time. The five thousand hungry souls he fed on the banks of the river with two fishes, five loaves of bread. Oh, what a miracle he performed for the multitude. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, oh he's a known time God. Yes, he is. Joe said he may not come when you want him to, but he will be there right on time. Oh, he's a known time God. Yes, he is. Sing it one more time. 
Aren't you glad he's on time for you this evening? Amen. You are God alone. You're not God created by human hands. You're not a God dependent on any mortal man. You're not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan and that's just the way it is oh you are God alone from before time
is all of that to us. Unchangeable, unshakable, and he's unstoppable this evening. Amen. And as we go to the prayer request this evening, we believe that, don't we? Amen. We want to continue to remember our brother Donnie Nicholson in our prayers. We're glad to have him in the house of the Lord with us this evening. Amen. God bless you, brother Donnie. We want to continue to lift up our pastor, brother Ron Spencer, that God would just touch his body and strengthen him. Also want to remember Brother Daryl Ward's sister, Judy Archer, as she's dealing with that stage four sarcoma of the liver. Also want to remember Sister Betty Morris with that kidney disease. Continue to lift up Sister Linda Kreger's cousin, Eddie Pauly, with that prostate cancer. Our sister June Shiflett at home. And then we want to lift up our brother Bill Hinkle at home as well and the family there. Just minister to each and every one of them. Brother Ron, Brother Andrew in church, remember our neighbor in prayer. Her husband passed away yesterday. Thank you, Sister Amanda. Amen. How many would have an unspoken request you'd like to lift up to the Lord this evening? Amen. I'm going to ask our Brother William Bolivon if he would just come this evening. Amen. Let's bow our heads and our hearts. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you this evening. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to gather in your presence one more time. Lord, we can gather, Lord, in an atmosphere, Lord, where you're welcome. Where, Lord, we as your redeemed sons and daughters of God can begin to sing praises to you, Lord. And adore you from our hearts, Father, Lord. Adore you with our lives, Lord. Adore you with our voices. And, Lord, it so pleases you, Father, Lord. And as your word says that you inhabit the praise of your people. And, Lord, as we sing and praise you and worship you because you're so worthy. You then come down and even during the song service can begin to minister to our hearts, can begin, Lord Jesus, to heal us and encourage us. Lord, we thank you that you're such a loving Father, Lord, that you hear the slightest heart's cry, Lord Jesus. Father, you know our very thoughts. You know the things upon our hearts. You know the burdens, Lord Jesus, that's upon us, Lord, as we come into the house of God. But Lord, we don't want to leave with burdens. We've come here, Lord, to lay them at your feet. That's what, that's what you instructed us to do, Lord, is to come. All that are weary and heavy laden, and you promised, oh God, that you'd give us rest. How we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the rest. Thank you for the glorious gospel, Lord. Thank you for this message, Lord, that's called us out of the things of the world, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that allows us to live an overcoming life. We bless your name, Lord, and we want to express how much we love you, Lord. And we thank you for all your blessings on our lives, Lord. And as we enter this season of thanksgiving, Lord, may we not, may we not cease, Father, or fail to stop. And, Lord, and really count our blessings, Lord, and examine just how good you are to us, Lord. How we love you, Lord, and we're thankful to you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. We're thankful, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity again, Lord, to be gathered in your presence. Father God, you heard each and every request. Lord, you knew this these requests before the foundation of the world. And, Lord, I didn't hear a single request that was too hard for our God. I didn't hear a single impossibility, Lord, that you're not more than able to accomplish and Lord as each hand was slipped up to you Father in your presence you've seen that hand and Lord there's not nothing impossible with you Father God Lord I believe you've come Lord to challenge our faith to challenge oh God our faith that we're willing to believe that truly nothing is impossible we love you Lord we believe you with all of our hearts we ask you bless this word Father meet each and every need Lord each, each request that was read, read Father here tonight those, Lord, that are gathered by way of the internet, we just pray that you go to them, go to their homes, minister to their hearts. Lord Jesus, we pray that you strengthen, Lord, your servant, Lord, our precious pastor, Brother Ron. Bless him, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've been so good to him, Lord, and that you spared him, Father. We ask that you bless him, Lord, with a special portion of your spirit. As he preaches the word, Lord, may it minister to our hearts. May it bring about a change that draws us closer to you. We love you, Father. We ask your blessings even over this offering in every aspect of this service. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the seedings offering. Maybe as you give, let's sing a song, Saved by Grace. I've been saved by grace. Amen. Aren't you glad of that this evening? Oh, saved by grace. Well, I've been saved by grace. Oh, my name is in the Seems all washed away. Oh, saved by grace. Well, I've been saved by grace. Oh, it's 
not what I deserve. I'm saved by a grave. I was alone in the darkness. I could not find my way. When Jesus shined his light on me, then he turned on my night to day. Let's sing it again. Well, I was alone in the darkness. I could not find my way. When Jesus shined his light on me, then he turned on my night to day. Oh, say by grace. Well, I've been saved by grace. Well, my name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. This evening, we'll ask Sister Rebecca Borlevon, she come and sing for us this evening, and then maybe Sister Anna Thomas, we'll sing after her this evening.
Shadow you won't light up mountain you won't 
ever defeated I will not lose heart I'll fall in line and I'll do my part this trouble won't outlast your beautiful promise death at work in me in my mortal but a life had worked through you I have come to the end of me It's a new thing you're doing Stir up the spirit of faith in me I'm open, I'm willing, Jesus, do just the beginning and I'm ready for all it will bring Strong down but never destroyed your perfect strength fills every void and when I can't see it Lord help me in my mortal body but a life had worked through you I have come to the end of me it's a new thing you're doing stir up the spirit of faith in me I'm open I'm willing Jesus do your good work in me this is just the beginning and i'm ready for all it will bring if i need wisdom if i need strength give me perspective give me your rest and i will take hold of all that you said cause I'm not moving till you're moving if I need healing if I need hope you are the breakthrough you are the more I will take hold of all that you said cause I'm not moving till you're Stand for us this evening, Key of A. Oh Lord, we are the ones called by your name. Oh, we humble ourselves now as we pray. Oh, renounce and every sin and we. Seek your face 
and we say Let the fire fall. Amen. I want him to touch our lives, don't you? Amen. So good to see you. Amen. I want you to greet your neighbor there and tell him you love him and the love of the Lord. And Amen. Go ahead and tell two or three people while you're at it. You're getting a good habit of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We love you with all of our hearts and thankful for your prayers for us while we were away. We'll spend some more time on that in the morning. Just good to see you in the house of the Lord. Isn't he good to us? Amen. Amen. What a beautiful fall that we've had. Amen. And starting to turn winter now for us. And don't that happen quick? I'm not, I'm not really ready for it yet. So, amen. Amen. God bless you. If you turn with me in your scriptures tonight, James chapter 3, verse 1. I'm Brother Ron Spencer. Generally, Andrew is speaking for us on Saturday night, but he spoke both last week and had a lot of things in that going on, so we're speaking for you this evening and in the morning. Amen. Pray for us that God will give us strength. Amen. Didn't he do an awesome job last week? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like the word to affect our lives, don't you? Amen. I want to speak tonight and in the morning, thy word is my shield. Amen. James chapter 3 and verse 1. Interesting place to start. <clears throat> are, you, are you there? James chapter 3 and verse 1. My brethren, 
Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things that we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also ships, which through they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds. Yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Now he's going to talk about us. Even so the tongue. Is a little member boasteth great things. Behold how a great a matter a little fire kindleth. Isn't it amazing? In two minutes you can destroy an entire day. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. And sitteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on the fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of the things of the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. You're talking, Brother Ron, we're Christians here. (laughs) Yep, I'm reading it to the right crowd. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even Father, and therewith curse ye men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. To be. Doth the fountain send forth the same sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine or figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. God help us all tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. It's good to be in your house, a Saturday evening to serve the Lord. And Lord, as we come, we draw closer to you. We love you. We feel your presence already. So good to see one another. We're going to spend eternity. And Lord, I just ask you that you would anoint us in a special way, we pray. Lord, touch the needs of our people. Bless the visitors that are here with us tonight. Lord, may they feel the kindred spirit. We want to spend heaven with you. Minister to us in a special way, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. You may be seated. Amen. Such a powerful scripture puts us all on the same page. I like that, don't you? Hallelujah. Why don't you just point to your mouth right there? We all have one. Amen. I'm glad you can read a scripture and everybody says, yep, he's talking about me. Now, I want you to understand tonight when we talk about thy word is thy Thy word is my shield. The power of life and death is in our tongue. The most supernatural thing about you is not your hands, it's not your feet, is that right there. Because it can speak, it can speak an atmosphere. It can speak an atmosphere. You say, Brother Ron, I don't know so much about that. Just start worshiping God. And you'll bring him on the scene. Just tell your wife how ugly she looks this morning. I just proved a point here, didn't I? Now, now let me just say this to you. When his words go across our lips, they're not the, they're not the words of the president. They're not the words of some great poet. They're the words of God. And the words of God create an atmosphere and create, they actually create something in our lives, character inside of our lives. 
Notice the scripture, and there's going to be a lot of scriptures tonight. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even so the youths that shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brother Ram talks to us about that realm of, of heaven. He said it'll take perfect love to get there. Well, you must remember this is the place where we develop that kind of a character. First, in John chapter 13 and verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. John 13 and verse 35. By this all men know that ye are my disciples. If you have love one to another. 15 and 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. 15 and 17. These things I command you that you love one another. Notice the theme. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. For brethren, you have not, you have been called unto liberty, which is freedom, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but By love, serve one another. Hundreds of scriptures I could have read to you, but you get the thing. If you can't love one another, you can't go to heaven. Hallelujah. If you can't love one another, you can't go to heaven. Well, you say, well, Brother Ron, I don't like this one and I don't like that. Well, you can't go to heaven. By your own testimony, you can't go to heaven. Well, I don't like this person. I don't like that person. Let me give you an example here. Jesus hanging on a cross. Jesus hanging on a cross. He had been beaten with the cat of nine tails. His organs were hanging out. He has carried the cross. In the morning, we'll talk more about that. He even embraced the cross. He kissed the greatest last trial of his life. Trials come along in our lives to develop us and to make us better. Not to have whiny pity parties about, are you with me now? But to get us closer to God. This is the only place he can develop us. Your only mortal wants. You came from God, you're gonna go back to God. You were in his mind, but this is the place that you are developed. How many of you have had a test and you failed? Yeah, every one of your hands should have went up here. Well, let me just give you a perfect guarantee. It's going to come again. Well, I didn't like the trial. Let me just say this to you. When Andrew set me down the first week of my diagnosis... He said, Dad, what do we want to accomplish in this trial? One of the things, I said, I want to be sweeter. I didn't mean diabetes. (laughs) But let me just say this to you. If you go through a trial and do not become a better Christian, You missed the point. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Now let me just say this to you. We must understand that he was in two worlds at the same time. He was looking at the eternal purpose of God. 
They did not know Calvary was saving me and you. They did not realize when they whipped him, he was going to fulfill Isaiah 53. Let me just say this to you, even as Israel is at war tonight, don't get on the wrong side of that war. Don't go feel sorry for the Palestinians and all the Arab nations. That war's been going on since Abraham has been here. Well, Brother Ron, this man is being killed today. Let, let me just give you a little preface here. God killed 85,000 in one day. He destroyed the whole world with a flood. But he watches over his elect. Don't let politics blur your mind here. Those Jews are God's chosen people. They're not going to lose. So don't get on the wrong side there. Are you with me now? They're not going to lose. Now I'm going to bring it to this. You're not going to lose. Why'd you say that, Brother Ron? Listen, your adversary will do a lot of things to you. It'll cause, it'll cause a lot of wars in your life. Keep your focus on who you are. Look over at your neighbor. Tell him, keep your focus on who you are. I want you to say this, this scripture with me. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Thank you, Sister Stephanie. You guys are like my daughters. Stephanie and Crystal, they came in when they were just pups. They call Connie affectionately Mama Connie. And I don't know what they call me. Maybe Pops. <laughs> I'm going to work you hard tonight. I'm sorry. No weapon. I want you to say it. No weapon. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn what does that mean, Brother Ron? You can look at the devil and say, you did this to me. And God's going to use you to be a testimony against the devil. Because God is a good, just God and he's got to have a witness against cancer. And I'm going to stand there and tell him, you did this to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him. Let's read it together. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. We all know where that comes from. And by the word of Ron Spencer's testimony. Read your name right there. And by the word of and they love not their lives unto death. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 16 and verse 13. Sorry, Steph. Well, here we go. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Matthew 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put your priorities right. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Listen, if God's first, you can't fail. Amen. If your priorities get in another order, let me just say this to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Yes. Now remember this, God's words are eternal. They're, they're not time sensitive. They are eternal. God never has a new thought. God is never in a crisis. 
God is never in a position to where he wants to change his mind and say, well, you know, it worked 2,000 years ago, but you know, today I've got to change it so it will work. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, it is not even, uh, God don't have a word for South Africa and a word for Virginia. God's word goes through every culture, every man, black, white, yellow. When we face, when we face our, when we face the demons of hell, the scriptures become our warfare against him. Not our thoughts, not our emotions, not our opinions. Well, brother Ron, I got mad. Let me just say, you listen, the devil will spit on you to make you mad. Remember when Brother Brandon was standing there that day and that, that man who had whipped a lot of preachers came up and said, this day I'll, I, I'll kill you and begin to make all kind of boast. That man spit in Brother Branham's face. And let me just say, he was trying to get Brother Branham, the boxer, to show up. But he met the God that was inside of William Branham. Are you with me? Let me just say this. You don't take your human element thinking you're going to whip the devil. Say that with me. Don't take your human element thinking you're going to whip the devil. We wage war against the enemy. But we don't do it with our human flesh. We bind and we loose. By the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the authority of our name, but the authority. And we're commissioned. We're commissioned, whether you're a little bitty tiny woman or you're a great big man. We're commissioned to use the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you bind him, You stop him in his heels. So let me just say this to you. Stop complaining. Stop having your personal pity party. Stop getting in your cave like even Elijah did. I could take you through all the scriptures. Moses got a temper. Elijah was moody. They didn't defeat the devil with their moodiness or their temper. Oh, brother, and I've got this excuse. Stop using your excuse. Stop using your excuse. I'm going to use that tomorrow. Stop using your excuse trying to defeat the devil. Your excuses were sent along in your life for you to overcome. Your excuses were sent along in your life for you to overcome. Now turn around and say, I refuse. And I learned this from Ken Boyer. I refuse to give Satan voice. Brother Ken Boyer came here and spoke a sermon called Slaying Giants. At that point, he had a a tumor that was in his brain. He told me that he had a tumor in his brain. They had had a wreck on a four-wheeler. He had died in the accident. Wayne Lawson prayed for him, and he came back to life. And when they they examined Brother Ken, they found a, a huge tumor in his brain. He took the choice of not having any. I'm not not arguing with his choice. He took the choice of not doing chemo or not doing anything to to get rid of it. And I I talked to him literally just a few weeks before he died. And he told me how victorious he was and how good that he felt. He was a testimony in that area. But he said, I refuse to give the enemy voice. In my life, let me just say this to you, no matter what your condition is, don't exalt it above God. 
Walk in victory. Talk in victory. Praise in victory. I'd say this, no matter how big your enemy is, never give up. I got a news bulletin for you. God answers prayer. But Brother Ron, but you know, a per- that person died. Let me just say this to you. They may have died, but they was not defeated. Amen. Sister Sister Erica just passed away. I'd say she was probably one of the most prayed for people in the entire globe that's ever been because of social media. Sure, she died. But the cancer didn't win. I may die before morning, but cancer will not win. I'll say it to you. I said it at her funeral. And and it's been said by many people. Let me just say this to you. If you hear I died, don't believe it for a second. I will be more alive there than I am here. So many people sing about prayer, they, dread, they sing about death, they dread death, they all the time worried about when will my last day. Spurgeon said this, and I think it's pretty incredible, never think about your last day. God will take care of that on its own. God numbers our days. He knows when we're going to be here and when we're going to leave. So let's leave that part up to God. Let me just say this to you. This tongue has the power of preaching, of speaking positive, or it has the power to speak negative. Let me just give you this for just a moment. Brother Thomas is in business. Many of you are in business. We realize that when somebody, when somebody can, when some, you do a job for somebody, they can, they can send out a negative response. Listen, this was when I was in the chimney sweep business. It started in 88. And, and I read back then that, that 48 people will respond negative while seven will respond positive. You ever been around people that were just negative? My hamburger's dry. This ain't good. Every meal that they sat down, at, it ain't good. It ain't good. Well, if you was in Africa tonight, you'd be thrilled to eat what you had in front of you. What do you do with people, Brother Ron? You go out to eat with them and they start all the time negative about our food. I never go out to eat with them again. I don't like negativity around me. I don't like gossip. I don't like drama. Have you been here long enough? You know I don't like drama. I don't like gossip. Most time gossip ain't right to start off with. It's just where you're standing when you heard it. (laughs) I was sitting with with a... some preachers one night after a service and they had took me out and they, I, I kind of felt like their intentions were when they took me out to eat. They all sat on that side and I sat on this side. I thought, hmm, this ain't good. And they started talking about one of my friends. One of my good friends. Let me just say this to you. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. And it's a real dangerous thing to talk about my friends. And they started talking about my friend. I let him go for a while. I pulled my phone out and I said, hey, listen, I know the real deal here. I know the real story and you're operating on gossip. Let me call my friend. They all of a sudden had an itch to leave. So when you hear something of gossip, say, hang on just a minute. Let me call the real guy. Hang on just a minute. I don't believe you got that exactly right. Take Brother Ron's deal. Call the real guy. 
Give the Lord a good hand right there. Now, in this mortal life is the only time that we can bring ourselves under subjection to Christ. It's our only time. It's the only time that we could do it. Your character does not change on your way in the rapture. You are here, but you're going to be somewhere else. If you're a, if you're a liar here, you're going to be a liar there. And most likely, you ain't going there. You're a bad guy here. You know, so many times you go to a funeral, well, he's better off. Well, let me just say this to you. Not everybody's better off. It's not a time to be real truthful there and stand there. You're right. You're right. You're better off. All right. Well, sometimes a God bless you will, will work out real well. Telling a family member they went right straight to hell is not a good thing for you to do. <laughs> then that's not going to be good. You may think it, but you bet. So we're all live people here. Reach over and tell your neighbor, are you live? So here we are, what we are in this life is what we're going to be somewhere else. Now, there's many great leaders that have come and gone that would not allow themselves to be molded by the hand of God. There was a basketball coach that just died this week, and I'm going to use it. (laughs) He died this week, and he's reaping his reward, whatever it was. He was, a, he was a champion, he was a champion basketball coach. He, he coached a perfect team. He, he coached them to be totally undefeated. He coached Mike Shashevsky, who was the all-time great. He, he had a lot of people that played for him, but he said, I did it my way. That was constantly his thing. I did it my way. Now he may have been a phenomenal coach. But he was not a man that would allow himself to be developed in his character. Are you with me? Are you with me? He threw chairs. He choked men. He grabbed them. He wrestled them. He cussed a lot of people. As a matter of fact, he said many disparaging things to many people. You want that to be on your record and make God with? Well, Brother Ron, you're picking on a basketball coach. Well, let's talk about Napoleon. Brother Ron said he conquered the world. He conquered the world, but he couldn't overcome himself. So don't, don't conquer the world and can't overcome yourself. One of the most famous preachers that ever lived was a man named Billy Sunday. He had become a professional baseball player. Then he got saved. And when he got saved, he became a preacher. And he was a phenomenal preacher. You hear even Brother Branham talk about Billy Sunday. You hear a lot of famous preachers at the turn of the century talk about how great a man that Billy Sunday was. But here's a statement that I do not want in my life. He said, I, con- I led the world to Christ. But my children went to hell. I don't want that. As a matter of fact, that's one of my measuring sticks for a ministry. Not, listen, a lot of people can say a lot of incredible words here and, and hold people spellbound. But does it live on Monday? Does it live on Monday? I went to a hunting camp We'll, we'll speak of it tomorrow, but I went to a hunting camp because it was a bucket list thing, and Matthew took me there, and, and I met these people for the first time. It's a hunting camp. People come from all over the United States to hunt there. Generally about 18, 13 to 18 people are there, rough, rough as they can be. But Ben testifies today. They actually watch this service. 
But Ben testifies today that many preachers has come here. But you changed this camp. You changed this camp. Never preached a sermon to them. But your atmosphere. Preach a sermon and don't say a word. Let this live. Let it live. Many people go, well, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. Let it live. Just let it live. You don't, you don't have to tell everybody what you are. I'm a Christian. Live it. Because if you say it and you don't live it, you're a liar. I'm not going to go to church because they're all hypocrites. You didn't stop going to Walmart. I don't like the people I sit on the pew. Are you going to let people that you sit on a pew with go, make you go to hell? I was a chimney sweep. I didn't exactly send out a resume of who I would clean their chimneys for. Is this already to be a little bit different tonight? I walk in. Guy's tattooed up. He's a big man. Matter of fact, he's a huge man. He's got his Harley mama there with him. And, you know, I, I couldn't move his stove. It was too big. I was trying to get it back in place. And I, I was doing my best, and I finally decided I couldn't do it. So I called him by name, and I, I called him in there, and he said, most people are scared of me. And I said, oh, I used to be scared of people like you, too. What do you mean by that? I said, I met Jesus. And then I found out people like you need love. That's right. And I looked across and I was literally just a couple feet from him. And I saw tears going down through his face. He said, last night I was laying in bed. And he said, I, t I told my girlfriend, he said, you know, I'd like to go to church. But ain't nobody here would have me. Ain't nobody would want to sit on a pew with me. He said, I'm accused of killing five different people. Accused. He said, I'm a leader of the biker gang. And he said, I told her last night, I wonder if Jesus would even have me. I wasn't interested in the stove or the pipe anymore. And I said, You're, and God sent me here. I said, let's get down on our knees. Got down on our knees and I began to pray and I led that man to the Lord. Now you see, leading a man to the Lord, if his seed is to be bride, the Holy Ghost will lead him to the message. But I want people to be as good as I can help them to be. It's not up to me to judge them. It's up to God to place them. It's not up to you to qualify and disqualify. That's not in our pay grade here, folks. It's, it, and if you find yourself judged, you're doing the wrong thing. That ain't the place for you to do that. You'll do that there. Not here. But let your light so shine. We rolled up into a home one day and it's, it had 14 bedrooms, 14 bathrooms. It had eight different fireplaces in it. Two helicopter pads. It had a big old gates. It had a security guard.
It had a full-time chef. It's one of the most different houses I'd ever seen. And I come to find out it was a Hollywood star place to where people wanted to come to Virginia and just spend some time. There was a soap opera star that was that would come around with a toboggan over his head. I don't watch soap operas, so I wouldn't know who he was. But we worked. Dad and I worked all day. We worked all day there. And the chef said, we don't have, we don't have much of you guys here at this place. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Christians. Never said a word. Never said a word. Somebody answered the phone, it's God. <laughs> so anyway, never said a word to that man. But you see, the life lived. The life lived. I may not live long, but the life lived. Can I go on? When I get my tickle box rolled over, I have a whole lot of trouble getting it rolled back. Brother Arn, you're preaching. Yeah, but I still got a tickle box. Brother Homer and I was getting ready to do a funeral. Had two seats sitting here. We walked the family in. <laughs> what was funny about it was he asked me before we left the office, did you cut your phone off? I said, yes, sir, I did. We go and pray. And I read John chapter 14. And we pray and come down the aisle. We're sitting down. We sit there and there's a song going to be sung. And Homer's phone goes off. Well, Homer was... He was stone deaf, so his phone's loud. And he said, don't worry, folks, it's from God. <laughs> you will never forget those things ever in your life. They're etched forever. Psalms chapter 18 and verse 1, I'll do my best to go forward just for a few more minutes. Psalms, you know who wrote, wrote this? I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. You remember when my trial first started out, God spoke to me. If you will trust me, I will use you like never before. I knew it was accurate because of this scripture. I want you to read it with me. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Psalms 59 and verse 16 but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy and of my mourning. For thou hast been my defense. I love that. When God is your defender. Amen. Who better than to have you as God is your defender. And refuge in the day of my trouble. Amen. I would hate to think that I was fighting cancer without God. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Oh, I'm Lord God. Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretcheth out thy arm and there is nothing. Nothing too hard for thee. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon high, mine high places. Psalms 28 and verse 7. 
The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and my song will I praise him. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and is sharper than a two any two-edged sword. And it piercing even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the mire. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of my heart. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Let's read it together. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. There was a charismatic preacher that was with us in the camp this week and has a huge congregation. He and his son was there. It was all over with. We spent time together. And he said, I want to ask you. He said, I've met a lot of people. He said, but I've never met nobody like you. Amen. That's what he said. He said, why do you have such great joy? Why do you have such great joy? I said, God's my comforter, and he's my strength. I have figured out what is important in life, and I have figured out what is stuff. God is first place in my life. My family, I, I literally want to be with my family all of the time. Hey, I like being with my wife. There's no need in taking up time fussing and fighting. I enjoy being. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Isn't it good to us? Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. There's going to be some times when you're absolutely alone. When you're absolutely alone. How many widowers or widows are in the building? Yeah. It's a lonely life, isn't it? The one thing that we hear from every widow and widower, it's a lonely life. Amen. There's a lot of first that you have to deal with. Going home to an empty house. Not, not getting that special call. Not somebody putting the arm. I don't mean to bring these things up. But not having that arm to put around the neck. Let me just say this to you. Take advantage of that now. Amen. Before you join that exclusive club. Because it's going to happen. Without a rapture, it's going to happen. I can prepare for Sister Connie a lot of things. I can pay off all of my bills, and I did. I can pay off everything and put everything in order, and I did. Amen. I can make funeral plans, and I did. Because right. I'm a businessman, and I don't want her to do that. But there's one thing I can't do for her is that I can't put my arm around her, right. and I can't hug her. So I got to do it now. Right. I had a point to it. I had a point to it. I read the scripture earlier, but I want to read it again. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
And they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 73 and verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth. Can you read that with me? My flesh and my heart faileth. You remember how I started this sermon off about you can't defeat the, the devil on your own? He's been fighting for 6,000 years. And he knows how to fight. And he knows if time lasts, you'll come to a part where you can't fight him anymore. I'm standing here in strength. So I got to do the work now. Are you with me? Martin Luther would make the statement, we must work while it's day. Because night cometh. Are you with me? My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. Now I want to I just give you a couple of words just before I give. And I've said these words to you before. And you'll hear them again in the morning. So I don't want to be redundant. But I want to say this to you. Never give up. Quote that to your neighbor. Never. <clears throat> now, I, I want to I share a little story with you. There was a little boy, and I'll probably share this with you in the morning because it's too good not to bring back up. There was a little boy on a city block. And he was standing there stomping his foot. Somebody walked by and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm keeping the elephants away. He said, son, there's no elephants nowhere near. He said, I'm doing a good job, ain't I? (laughs) Now, a lot of people can fight trials that ain't never going to come their way. So they can stand and stomp their foot and tell you how to do it, but it ain't theirs. So you got to overcome your trial. You got to overcome your trial as it comes to you. I'm always amazed that people tell you how to raise your children when they ain't got they ain't got none. If I had that child, I'd straighten that child up. I'd beat that child up, and they ain't got one. There's a lot of people that can give marriage advice that's been married five different times. Who wants to take advice for something? So why not choose this? You don't have to read Dr. Dobson. Choose this right here. It'll tell you how to raise your children. (laughs) Well, Brother Ron, I've just read the five love languages of of marriage. Really? You could have saved yourself a lot of times reading Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives as Christ did the church. (laughs) never give up always be ready and on the mark I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me now remember these words as long as you're a spectator As long as you're a spectator, 
The devil's all right with that. But the moment you start raving your head and worshiping God, all hell breaks loose. As long as you're a spectator and just coming to church and being entertained, the devil's all right with that. But the moment you start worshiping God, well, Brother Ron, I, I just sometimes feel like quitting. Well, are you think that you're the first one that ever felt like that? How many has ever felt like just quit? Amen. Tomorrow morning I'm freaking on liars. <laughs> I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do this to give you, give you some redemption. How many of you join with me has felt like quit? Turn the camera. Don't turn the camera over. Every champion has felt like quitting. Muhammad Ali in one of the books said, every time I got whipped, I felt like quitting. And when I got home, my wife said, you got to go back out there and do it again. Every prophet... Felt like quitting. Well, Brother Ron, Brother Branham never felt like quitting. You have not listened to standing in the gap. He said when he went to Canada, listen, Brother Bisco was with him. He said, I never knew his thoughts. He felt like it was heaven. I think, I think I'll come up here. I think I'll, I'll just stay here if God, if I'm a prophet, I'll just come up here and I, I, I'll bring my family here. And, I, and if God speaks to me, I'll go down and preach it to the people and then I'll come back up here. Amen. Listen, you could go to the ends of the world. To the beach, to the mountains, to the city, to a place in somewhere where you live in a tent, there's going to be a devil. So somewhere you've got to eyeball, eyeball that guy and overcome. Or he's going to meet you tomorrow. Or he's going to meet you the next day. Jesus himself felt like quitting. Well, Brother Ron, I, I don't know about that. Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Every president has felt like quitting. Every king has felt it. Every lion, every winner, every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge to quit. Amen. Brother Ron, what makes you quit? Keep going. I climbed up in bed last night about 2 o'clock in the morning and I rolled over and I told Sister Connie, pray for me. I don't know how much more I can take. That's me talking. That's my flesh Dealing with the aches and the pains and the sickness. But you know what I did this morning? I got up. Amen. Now I'm just telling you from my personal testimony. You can tell it from your personal testimony. You got to get back up. I want to encourage you, if you're down, you're on the internet, you're watching this service, you may not be fighting my battle, 
But you may be backslid in your spirit. You may be away from God. You may be having horrible disease. Get up. Just keep getting up. Just keep getting up. Nobody will love me. Try it. Try it. There'll be somebody that'll wrap their arms around you and tell you, I'm glad you're back in church. Try it. That was for you, girl. I stood in your mother's funeral. I walked out in front of you as a family, led you to where we were going to go into the assembly. And I, when I turned around, God spoke to me and said, she's coming back. You see, God knows who's coming and who ain't coming. I'm glad I was part of that. I'm glad God don't give up on me. I stand to her feet. James 3 and verse 4. Let's read these three scriptures together. Amen. Are you ready? Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Amen. Won't you turn now and exercise that gift and tell your neighbor, I love you with the love of the Lord. Tell somebody else. Let's sing a song, This is the Day that the Lord has Made. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. and be glad 
This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Got so much to thank Him for. When I look around and see all the good things He does for me, I know. so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me and when so much to thank him for well sometimes while on this way I kneel I just stop and say thank you Lord for all you've done for me and someday heaven shore oh please let me kneel once more i've got so much to thank him for and i've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me you give the Lord a hand clap of praise when I think about the Lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the Holy Ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when I think about And turn me around How he placed my feet On solid ground It makes me want to shout Hallelujah Thank you Jesus Oh Lord you're worthy Of all the glory And all the honor
saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet oh thank you lord on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus oh lord you're worthy of all the so much to thank him for amen tonight uh as we get ready to be dismissed those who signed up to have a part in the play if you wouldn't mind just uh going to the back there and please see sister chastity and uh she has something there for you all and the young adult choir if you wouldn't mind just staying after to uh to practice after the dismissal today Amen. If you had a part to play in, in, in the play, just see Sister Chastity at the back of the church tonight. God richly bless you. Be remembering the service in the morning. Be remembering our pastor, Brother Ron. And we'll just come expecting to, to tomorrow morning. Is that right? Amen. Let's sing that song one more time as we're dismissed tonight. Go in the name of the Lord. God richly bless you. Oh, when I think about the Lord. How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the whole.